Hey guys, welcome back to the Max Spence Business Podcast. Uh, Before I get into today's guest, if you guys can please like, subscribe, leave a review, it helps out a ton with the podcast and also the people that are coming on the show. So without further ado, today's guest is Mike Holt. So um, actually, this guy is actually really interesting. I've I've been watching quite a few of his uh, YouTube videos and also uh, his LinkedIn content as well, which has been absolutely amazing. Um, So I... I don't know what to like, I don't know what box to put you sort of put you in because you're a founder of three companies, you're a YouTuber, you're sort of like a content creator on LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, so what, how, how would you sort of describe yourself to, let's say, if somebody just met you for the first time? Yeah, so thanks. I, I just want to say first, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, so I, you could say that I'm unboxable, so to speak. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing many different things and kind of a jack of many trades. Um, I, I have been running a consulting business for almost two years since the start of the, the pandemic. So I started that up. It's called Be Remote Consulting, where I'm essentially helping entrepreneurs adapt to the remote work lifestyle. And uh, so that's the consulting business. Then I'm also a, a, a travel photographer. So I've, I've, I've been taking photos while traveling in different places, exotic destinations around the world. And uh, aside from that, I'm also launching a kind of like a property tech startup here in Thailand where I'm based. Oh, okay, awesome. And, and that's what we'll, we'll actually go through all that l- later on to the, into the podcast. But that the, the property tech startup, is that 360 uh, tours? That's right. Okay, yeah, okay awesome. Tours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm actually uh, pretty excited to get into that. Um, but yeah, so why don't we just sort of start from the beginning, uh, you know, because you're, you're a really interesting guy, like there's, you know, you got a lot of unique stuff that's happening in your life. So, um, you know, why don't we just break it down from the beginning? Like, where did you grow up? Uh, what school did you go to? Uh, did you go to university? Did you not go to university? And what was your first passion growing up? Oh, good questions. Ah, way to put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, uh, I went to, I grew up in Lansing, Michigan. And so, you know, pretty close to Canada. And I, I they traveled around a lot. My dad was constantly getting new jobs. He was an electrical engineer. So he worked at Texas Instruments for a while, IBM. So I was, I was traveling around quite a bit from an early age for uh, you know, my dad's work. And essentially we you know, travel around a lot. And then I went back to Michigan and went to Michigan State University. I studied computer science there. I, I did it. I got my bachelor's degree. It took me a little while. Uh, it took me about five years to get the degree, uh, but it was, it was a great learning experience. And from there, I just, you know, I, I moved down to Austin, Texas, because I, I knew there was a lot of tech jobs there, and I figured it would be a good place to kind of build my career. So moved down there, quickly found a job developing mobile apps at a company called Connectel, which you've probably never heard of before. It's just a small, small operation in Austin. And, you know, I worked there for probably about six months. I learned a lot about developing apps at the company, and it was still kind of like a startup. And uh, after that, I just decided why not why work for this company and why not just create my own app startup so that's what it did uh essentially it was an it was an app to help you find your parked car oh okay okay yeah that's actually pretty cool so um was was tech sort of your first passion or like did you have any other passions or what what, was that like it's always been a passion of mine i was i've been coding since a very, from a very early age. And I started out with HTML, CSS. That was back in high school, actually. Oh, wow. So I started pretty early. And oh, okay. then I just decided, oh, okay, well, I'll get a computer science degree. I know there's a lot of high paying jobs in there. It's very, it's very in demand. Uh, so that's what I did. And, you know, skip to now where I'm, I'm essentially not using my degree at all. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no longer interested in programming, sitting in a cubicle and just coding yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 hundred percent. And I think, uh, I, I think that happens to uh, quite a few people. They, uh, they, they get a taste of what they thought they were really gonna like or whatever, right? Uh, uh-huh. and they discover a new part of them that they absolutely love, and you know, they start chasing that. Uh, so what? Absolutely. What? 
Yeah. So, so what made you decide to move to Thailand? I, I, I think you moved to Bali first and then you moved to Thailand, if, if I'm correct with that. Yeah, that's so, correct. Yeah, you've okay. obviously read, read some of my content. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <that's great. laughs> yeah. So in late 2019, I was, I was still in, I was back in Austin after I was essentially I was backpacking through South America for almost a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So that's where they kind of started. And then I went back to Austin, saved up some money and I was just getting sick of sick and tired of struggling to pay rent. I was actually at the time, uh, riding my bike and delivering food to people kind of like a, a grab or this yeah. one's called favor. So that's what I was doing to just, just to get by and pay rent at my house and, uh, kind of, you know, close to the city. And I just decided, ah, I'm so tired of this. Uh, I'd much rather just use the, the savings that I have and buy a one-way ticket to Bali, Indonesia, which is a place that I've been wanting to visit for many, many years. And, you know, I thought this is it's a very popular spot for digital nomads to go and kind of just work from their laptops and enjoy the, the beautiful island. So that's what I did. Oh, okay. And that was in late 2019. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and, um, after that backpacking trip was like, w w was the idea of becoming a digital nomad sort of floating around in your head. And that's like when you yeah. jumped to go to Bali, were you like planning to become a digital nomad? And, and, and when, what was your sort of like, um, plan with that? Right. Like a, a lot mm -hmm. of people might want to do that jump and they think, well, you know, uh, I don't have an online business. I, I, I don't have maybe a, a skill set that I don't really think could, you know, translate to working from a lamp, a, a laptop. So how did you sort of set yourself up financially to sort of do that and yeah. sort of live out? Uh, or did you just sort of jump there and just figure it all out? <laughs> Pretty much. That's, that's a, it's a great question. And I, I wouldn't recommend someone just quitting their job and then taking off somewhere without any freelance clients or, you know, no work of any kind. That's that's quite risky. But when I when I originally started out backpacking through South America, I just bought a one way ticket to Panama City. This was about two years prior. And I think I had, I don't know, a thousand dollars in my bank account. And I didn't know how I was going to just survive day to day. Um, but luckily, uh, my a friend back at Austin told me about the Airbnb referral program. So essentially what you're doing is you're getting people to sign up to become a host on the platform, and then you get paid a commission for every new host who signs up. So that's essentially what I was doing for over a year while backpacking in South America. Oh, so essentially okay. it's like email marketing. I was mm -hmm. just getting hosts to sign up on Airbnb, and then they typically pay me like anywhere from 200 to $300 for every new host. Oh, wow. That was it. I mean, I didn't have any clients. Yeah. So, okay. Just doing that. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, okay. Yeah. That, that, that's actually super interesting. So um, like speaking on that a little bit more and giving some more advice, uh, what, what would you say to somebody that uh, let's say they're, cause I, I we're going to get into Thailand and all that type of stuff. And like, you know, I really want to cover for this podcast is like, you know, how can somebody move to Thailand and become a digital nomad and all that type of stuff. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Speaking on that, um, what if I, like you, you've been in Thailand for a while now, what, what sort of financial advice do you have for somebody that's maybe working a job in the US or, you know, Canada or something, and they want to make that jump to Thailand? Um, you know, is like, should you have, have some saving, like, is there a certain amount of savings you should have up or should you try and land a job first or, you know, have some clients first or what, 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 if pretty much what I'm trying to get out is like, if, if yeah, you had yeah. to do it over again, like, what would you, uh -huh. knowing what you know now, what, what would you do? Yeah, I would have at least two to three paying clients lined up before just coming to Thailand and then figuring out as I go along. It's, it makes it a lot less stressful if you know, if you have like a consistent income every month mm -hmm. and you know you've got it in your books that these clients are paying me this much and such and such. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Don't just quit your job on a whim and, uh, and come to Thailand without any consistent paying clients. But aside from that, I mean, obviously now a lot of companies are allowing for full-time remote work. Mm -hmm. And if you just talk to your boss and you, you, you ask them like, hey, I, I'm, uh, I would like to work remotely from Thailand. 
probably a lot of them would say, no, that's, that's not allowed, but you know, times are changing. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, a hundred percent. And it's the, uh, I think there's a, there's a huge, well, there, there's already a huge push since 2020 in the pandemic and everybody mm-hmm. had to re- work remote. People sort of realized they're like, I'm doing the exact same job. I'm just at my house. Like, and if I'm here at my house, exactly. I, I, I can <laughs> like, you know, I'm not going in my office and doing zoom meetings. I might like, I could be anywhere doing this. Right. Exactly. With the internet and laptop and a fast Wi-Fi connection, that's really all you need. Yeah. And if yeah, you're not I, required to go into the office, then what's, what's preventing you from yeah. coming to places like Thailand? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So um, actually just speak on that a bit. Um, uh, is, is there like, is, is there like, uh, is, is, is it hard to find like good Wi-Fi in Thailand or is there a lot of places that have like very sustain, like uh, stable Wi-Fi that you can use there? Yeah. So surprisingly, believe it or not, um, Thailand is actually ranked number one in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity speed wow. in Southeast Asia. I wow. think Singapore is, is, does a little bit, scores a little bit higher, but just for example, like here on the Island where I'm at in Koh Samui, uh, we're just renting, I'm just renting an Airbnb here and the Wi-Fi speed is 350 megabits per second. Wow. <laughs> and it's kind of like, it just near, it's close to the beach and a little bungalow. Yeah. And yeah, it's really fast. Internet. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's, 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 yeah, no, like that's like, <laughs> Even in Canada, like you go to some places and you can't even get like, you know, 10 megabytes per second. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. But I don't, I don't want to mislead your listeners by yeah. making them think that it's fast Wi-Fi everywhere you go. Obviously, like you're, if you're somewhere in rural yeah. Thailand where there's no connectivity, then it's going yeah. to be different. But this yeah. island is a fairly touristy place normally. Of course, right now, due to COVID, it's, it's completely different. Lots of businesses are closed and it's struggling. The economy is struggling a lot as well yeah. as the people running the businesses. But, yeah, to, uh, to, yeah. To, to, to sort of actually jump into that, uh, how, how has COVID sort of affected like the market and where you're living right now? Like, um, Dramatically. What, well, yeah, yeah, because I, I actually I, yeah. I was like, I actually went to Thailand in 2018. And like, this was before like COVID and all that type of stuff. And it was like crazy. <laughs> there's like so many people there. Uh, like, yeah. So many tourists, right? Like, there's just so many people that are just going there experiencing Thailand and stuff. Um, but I, 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 I was looking, I was looking into Thailand, and the majority of their GDP is all from tourism. That's right. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty at sure. Least yeah, 40%, I would say. Yeah. And, and it's completely different situation to um, to what it was like in 2018. I've, I've actually, this is the first time I've been in Thailand, so I didn't get to see what it was like in the heyday. Um, but now it's, it's the tourism economy, tourism industry, hospitality, and travel has been decimated. Yeah. Wow. And starting to slowly but surely return to normal, but the numbers that they're seeing now in terms of like foreign tourists coming into the country is... A pales in comparison yeah 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 no, no. pandemic yeah yeah it must be like even like like yeah to just thinking about that that must be extremely tough because like with covid it just like there's just like you know there's new variants that just keep popping out so it's like a, a lot That's of people right. are, a lot of people are still like they don't really want to travel yet um, uh-huh. And I think it might be like, you know, it might be another couple of years, but I, 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 I speaking on Thailand before I, I remember beforehand, it was like, it was absolutely amazing. Like you, you just meet, you, you'd meet like people from all over the world at like one place that were just doing the exact same thing, just wanted wow. to experience like you, like I, I remember meeting people from like it's Australia, incredible. Germany, um, you know, I, I met a guy who's from like Canada, Montreal, uh, you know, uh-huh. people from the US, people from the UK, like, you know, all over the world, you like people from Argentina, like all over the place, you, you meet these people, oh, right? And, I look yeah, forward to the day when that yeah. returns, when the tourists start coming back. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So uh, sort of speaking about uh, Thailand some more, um, were, were you so like, was there any like big uh, learning curves when you moved to Thailand uh, and experiencing that and like with the culture at all, like, was there anything that you sort of had to adapt to? Yeah, many things. It's, it's definitely culture shock if you're leaving your home and you're coming to a completely different um, place on the other side of the world where you don't, don't understand all the cultural norms 
Um, for me, not being able to speak the language was a little bit scary at first, but over time, I, I have picked up a little bit of Thai, although just a little bit. <laughs> My girlfriend is Thai, and we usually just speak English together, uh, so oh, I haven't really learned the language too much, but yeah. it's still very easy just to, a lot of people speak English. Um, you can get by with the basic, basic vocabulary. Yeah. So yeah. that that's definitely that's definitely mm -hmm. a this is a steep learning curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like th that's that's actually the um, uh, yeah. Cause so sort of reflecting on my experience from Thailand, it's like uh, yeah, a, a lot of people there actually speak like English, or they're just like super like they're super super nice. Like we like like, mm -hmm. like my brother and I like what, what we did is we actually rented motorbikes and just started motorbiking around Thailand, right? Like just dif to different like amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah we we. Nice. we, we it, it, oh, it was amazing. We went to, we went from, we rented motorbikes in uh, Chiang Mai, drove them up to Pai, and then from Pai uh -huh. did like a huge circuit around like that sort of area, right? Um, the main Hong Song Loop? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, we, yeah. we, 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 we didn't do the full one. I think we did half or a quarter of it because it, it would have taken like a lot longer than a day or something. Um, but we, we, we actually, we actually met these, um, we, we met this group of, uh, Chinese bikers that were actually doing the loop. So we actually followed them for a bit and then they went off, uh, off ahead and stuff. But, yeah, you just meet you. You meet a lot, a lot of like amazing people there that are like super, super nice, and um, That's right. you know, like even, actually, even, a, few of, a few of my friends here. There's one guy. He's uh, he's a Canadian retired guy living in in Samui, and uh, he's just one of the most down to earth nice guys I've I've ever met. I think awesome. And awesome. Uh, yeah. he's just enjoying. Like you know, he's getting away from the cold weather, living it up down here. So yeah, yeah. No, it's it's <laughs> it's. it's 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 pretty crazy yeah like uh the the country is absolutely like uh people that are listening to this i would highly recommend going and seeing thailand it's like it's like one of the most beautiful countries i've probably i would probably say i've traveled to a few different places and it's like i'd probably mm -hmm. say it's number one for like you know uh for like the the environment the people you meet there it's like absolutely like 10 out of 10 um yeah, but, but yeah to, to sort of transition yeah. from that um i'm sort of interested now like What's sort of the process for uh, starting a, a business in Thailand as a foreigner? Is it is it is uh -huh. it like a lot of red tape uh -huh. or uh, like what, what did well, you experience starting your companies? I would say there's a lot of red tape right now getting to Thailand if, if you're traveling. But in terms of setting up a business here, um, I, I've actually been approved for my smart startup visa. That's for the uh, the property tech startup that I'm launching, and essentially. I still need to go back to Bangkok to collect the smart visa. Mm -hmm. But what that allows you to do is uh, it allows you to, number one, open a Thai bank account, which is super important. If you want to start a business here, then you don't have to pay all the international fees when you go to the ATM and you can get a, you know, like a business loan. There's lots of perks that come along with that. And it's very easy to, well, relatively easy, I would say, to get approved for the smart visa. So if you're a digital nomad or, or like a businessman coming to start a business here, that's what I would recommend applying for. Because oh, okay. the, fee, the fee is a lot less and you just need health insurance, which is going to be required to come here anyway. You need $50,000 in health insurance for co to protect from COVID. Yeah. Um, so that's just, yeah, part and parcel. So with, with and, like, uh, just to talk about that health insurance a little bit more, because people sure. might just hear the 50,000 and be like, like, how much does that cost? Like to get that is, is yeah, that yeah. super expensive to get that health insurance or how, how, how does that not, sort of work? Not really. There's actually a company called Safety Wing. I don't know if you've heard of Safety Wing. No, uh, I, I, but I, I don't think I've. They offer, there's many different health insurance packages. There's another one called AXA, which is, I think just here in Thailand or in most of like Southeast Asia. Um, but I recommend Safety Wing, which is more for remote workers and digital nomads. And they offer insurance, I think it's starting at like $40 a month. Oh, okay. So it's that's not that's, expensive yeah. at all. Yeah, that, and it has all the coverage, all the required coverage that you need oh, to okay. come awesome. to Thailand to start a business. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, and then with the, and then with the smart visa, um, like how, what, what's the, like, after you get your health insurance, like, can you do this all, all online? Like, can you just register yeah. for this online or. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. It's cool. Through, cool. The, through the BOI, which is the board of investment here in Thailand. 
So you just need to apply. You need to upload a, a pitch deck, which is just you know talking about what your startup does, how how you're looking to raise funding, all these things. Oh, okay. And fill out some paperwork. I actually have a whole course about how to do this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, awesome. We can send you a link to that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll include it with the the podcast notes. Um, awesome. So, I, I actually, to sort of now uh, talk about um, actually get, getting like, so let's say if you're a foreigner, would you instead of doing a startup, would you be able to get like a, a job in Thailand if you you moved there? And what was that process like? Is that a complete? That's a yeah. I'd probably say it's a different process for getting a job. That's in a Thailand. good question as well. So, just speaking from personal experience, I've actually had two full-time jobs here in Thailand. And there essentially I was a freelancer working for the company. So wasn't, there's some gray area there. Uh, normally you need a work permit, but since I was a freelancer, it wasn't really it's kind of under the radar. Oh, okay. And, okay. Uh, so I worked for a company called Reverse Ads, which is a <clears throat> advertising tech startup in Phuket mm -hmm. for one month. And, uh, Unfortunately, things we had to go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then another company called Tiger News, which probably, if you know anything about Thailand, you may be familiar with this, this uh, news organization. I worked there for one month in Bangkok and actually quit my job and then decided to come back to Samui. Ah, okay, okay. And, and sort of talking about those job experiences, like, um, as a foreigner, how, how, how is like the, the work culture and like, how's the pay? Like, like, is it like, yeah. like if, if you're skilled, let's say in your, like, uh, I don't know, videography or something or like, mm -hmm. uh, marketing or ad creation, or I, I'm, I'm not too sure, just like some type of skill, right. Um, it, are, are they like decent paying jobs that you're good at? Like you can live off in, in, in Thailand or like how, how, how does that sort of work? Yeah. So I would say that's debatable. It depends on what what sort of quality of life that you're looking for. But yeah. uh, normally both of those jobs are paying about 50,000 baht, which is roughly 1500 US dollars. Okay. So comparing that to a salary in the US, it's nothing basically. I mean, a fraction of what you'd be making in the US. But yeah. since the cost of living over here and f expenses for food, transportation, all those things are a lot lower, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent salary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Unless yeah, you're yeah. living in the city and renting an expensive condo, you know, you want to stay below your means, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. Like I, I, I remember when when I was there, it was like, uh, you could spend like fifty. Like this is Canadian dollars, right? So I mean, U.S. Mm -hmm. dollars are a lot stronger than Canadian. Um, but I remember like you could spend like 50 cents to $1 and get like an amazing, exactly. meal, like, like pad thai, exactly. or like you could get like, uh, like one of my favorite things was the, the green curry that you could get there was like, oh, phenomenal. Yeah. like that was like one of my favorite, like the, like the, like, yeah, that's another thing to go on a little bit of a tangent. Like the food in Thailand yeah. is like absolutely insane. It's like, it's, totally. it's like, if, 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 if you like that type of food, um, and, and you're in like the North America and, uh, you know, and, and you eat like that type of food here, it's complete. Like, it's like 20 times. Like, I don't even know. It's like so, yeah. so much better. I mean, how much would you expect to spend on Thai food in where you're at in Canada? Yeah. Like let's $20 say, at least? yeah, yeah. To, to $20, $15. Uh, and to be honest, like there's, I, I, Not I, even I, good. I yeah, it's it's not even that good. Like I, I don't know. Have you heard of a company called uh, uh, Thai Express? Uh, no, I never have. Okay, okay. The, the, well, the, the, they're they're a Canadian like food chain company, and they're like a, a fast food company, and they sort of do like pad Thai and all that type of stuff. But it's uh -huh. like it's uh, you, you you try it here, and I mean like for Canadian stuff, it's like okay, unless you go to like yeah. a, a very like um like you know Thai restaurant and get Thai food there, then it'll be a lot better. But I mean, like you, you go to Thailand and you get like these people that like, you know, that are just like, they have like their shop on the street and they just make some food and you're just, yeah, yeah, and, just and, and, it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like they, 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 they don't have a full uh -huh. kitchen. They literally just have like a propane tank and like, you know, like a, like, I think it's a walk or something or like the, the, the bowl yeah. and, and they, and they cook your food and it comes out like amazing. You're just like, you're like yeah, how, how, every how, time. How, yeah. I've never been disappointed by any type yeah. of that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a dollar for a huge plate of pad thai. 
Yeah, it's it's just it's, that's that's one of the reasons I stay actually, and yeah. my girlfriend's here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't see any reason to leave, and I'm just going to keep extending. I've actually gotten the uh, uh, this entire time I've been on my tourist visa. Mm -hmm. If you can believe that, I, I keep getting COVID extensions like 60 days at a time, and so it works out to be about a dollar per day to stay in Thailand. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> for me. That's just, that's just a no brainer. <laughs> and yeah. So, so sort of talking that's about it. that, like, is, is your plan to sort of like stay in Thailand for like, you know, the next like five to 10 years and build out your business? Or are you thinking about maybe like, I, I, I mean, to be I mean, honest, that's... like what, what, once you're yeah. in Thailand, it's pretty easy to travel around the sort of exactly. areas, right? Uh, yeah. But, and what, what's, what, what's your sort of plan? I'm interested to hear. Yeah. My long-term vision is, I, I don't, I don't know about five to 10 years, but um, there is a, there's a, it's actually a visa. It's called the elite visa you can get here, which is good for like 30 years or something. Oh, wow. But it's very <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, I mean, I, my original plan was to, after Thailand, I had no, no intention of staying here for two years, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and it just, I just decided to stay, but I was planning on going to Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia and exploring more of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. But right now it's just, it's not easy to travel to these countries and there's still so many restrictions. Yeah. So it's yeah. just, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Yeah. The, and, and, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you can't really, you, you can't really uh, fully appreciate the country when they have all these restrictions, right? Like you're exactly. not, like, you can't go to certain mm -hmm. places. You might not like restaurants might be shut, all this type of stuff. So you can't get like the full, you know, see, see it at it's like, you know, it's peak sort of if, if, if to say. Um, I've so heard some kind of like horror stories about the Philippines where they're not even allowed to go like, I don't know, a kilometer, 500 meters outside their front door. Wow. And the food, the food delivery driver has to wait at some invisible barrier. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> oh, I don't know how things are in Canada right now. If, if, I'm, I'm assuming they're getting better, right? I mean, yeah, to can, well, Canada's um, like I, I know for the well, uh, it's just what I've seen on the news, right? For the US, it seems like they've sort of just um, pretty much just sort of like everything sort of open. Whereas for mm -hmm. uh, Canada, we're still in a bit of restrictions like we still have a mass protocol at that type of stuff but you can still go yeah, places. That's same here. uh mm -hmm. yeah gatherings are limited so i mean like there, there's still some restrictions but we're coming into christmas so uh i don't know if the like with the uh, i think it's the omicron variant that's like starting to pop up and starting to have like the resurgence and stuff uh i'm mm -hmm. not too sure if they're gonna decide to put uh restrictions in place that you can't do let's hope not yeah yeah ho ho hopefully they, they don't do that and they yeah so like i, I mean uh yeah it's 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 sort of like it's 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 always been sort of week by week month by month because they can change it on a dime you know they yeah. might say one thing and then they might be like actually you know what like because the cases have gone up we're changing it so i mean mm -hmm. yeah but uh to, to sort of now talk about your businesses now um I'm sort of interested here so with the 360 tours um you know how how are you sort of building out that business and how are you getting clients in thailand because i mean like are your clients uh like like um like Thai or are they like foreigners uh mostly, and how do you, Thai. mostly Thai and, and and with the communication do you find that hard with like or do most of them already speak like English already uh so a lot of times if I'm going to they usually speak English if I'm talking to like a hotel resort manager mm -hmm. then they'll they'll usually have a pretty good command on English but sometimes I'll just go with my girlfriend she speaks fluent Thai she's Thai so she can kind of help bridge the gap there with the communication barrier oh um, okay, okay. Usually, yeah usually it's very straightforward i just a lot of times when i was first starting out i would just go to a, into a hotel i could see that they have very the occupancy rate was well below 10 percent. right they have almost no customers and mm -hmm. i just kind of give them the pitch like i can offer these virtual tours that will allow people to walk around the entire property online are you interested basically Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. And, 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 in, in, uh -huh. and in, in, uh, in, in Thailand, are, is that getting big or is that sort of like new there for companies to start doing that? Yes. Cause I, I, I know in Canada, like the real estate market here, it's like, 
everybody like usually like as a video a videography company like they'll offer the virtual tours like they already have a package like you know the videography pictures virtual tours website all that type of stuff all in one uh and that's, that's just become right, right. The, the, that that's become the norm now so is that sort of similar to um you know the, t the thai market it's sort of similar it's not nearly well as well developed as canada or us mm -hmm. some of these but it's there is one company that's doing this and it's actually i was working in the same office as, as a company called Fazwas, and they're sort of like the leading marketplace platform for the virtual tours oh, but okay. it's more of a real estate like a fully fledged real estate company oh, whereas okay. mine is it's just going to be offering virtual tours and, oh, okay. and aerial photography if they need that as well oh, okay, but okay. it's not it's it's still a untapped market for sure like oh, if you go to wow. if you go to the websites of these hotels resorts villas they almost never have virtual tours on their mm. website yeah yeah and, 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 yeah no no 100 and and i think uh as uh like yeah that, that, that's gonna be huge right because like people have that, sort of started to get used to the um you know the zoom meetings and the virtual like the in like mm -hmm. the virtual reality type stuff right so i mean when people are going to be online looking at let's say they're planning a trip to thailand and they're looking at hotels right and they just see a few pictures and maybe they see a video but then they have one company one hotel that you can walk through the rooms and do a 360 and see every little detail of that room and then another company yeah, you where can you can your oculus rift yeah. or go into the metaverse or whatever this yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> that <we're doing> now. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and now there's there's a lot of uh so-called quarantine hotels asq hotels oh, that okay. at the beginning people would have to stay for two weeks at a hotel mm. and for me it makes why why just look at some pictures of the place you want to walk around the entire property before you make a booking you're spending a lot of money on this place right mm -hmm. for two weeks oh, so okay. that's, so that's is, kind of where the idea came from so is is that like with the virtual tours and the aerial uh photography and videography uh is that all your own personal skills or, or are you hiring somebody else to uh do that for for you for me it's all me Oh, okay okay starting out it's just all me but at the at the moment i'm actually looking for a startup investor because i need the this special matterport camera oh okay, which is okay. not cheap <laughs> <laughs> so right now i'm just using like a you know basic portable it's called a rico camera oh okay, which does okay. a good job but i would like to upgrade to something more professional so that's that's what i'm working on now oh, okay cool, uh, cool. i do have a few clients already oh, okay cool cool it's going well. awesome awesome yeah that, that, that that's great and, and sort of now to transition to uh you know the the be remote uh consulting so yeah. what's uh so is that just like you, you know you already have a ton of knowledge is that just sort of combining all your knowledge into one-on-one -on -one cons consulting and also courses as well pretty much yeah so i've got the courses i have some courses on linkedin marketing as well as the smart visa as we mentioned earlier Mm -hmm. have a full course about that to just improve their chances of getting approved for it and also another course on it's like a digital nomad training program mm -hmm. where i'm teaching everything that i've learned over the years mm -hmm. oh okay so, awesome including the airbnb how to make money with airbnb without owning any property oh, okay awesome uh, actually i'm, I'm pretty in, I'm, I'm pretty interested to hear about that um because you know court like uh like recently i'd probably say in the 2020 to 2021 or maybe even before that uh you know courses have been be like e-learning has been blowing up with like you know people that build brands in a certain skill like they build a brand That's or they, they well they have a skill set then they build a brand or they do vice versa or whatever uh but then they start rolling out these courses right and they start making like really really good money through these courses because they've learned a skill and they've learned a process and they just teach that right yeah um and that's become really big so how, what's your experience been in that industry and in building out these courses well i'm still not making very much from the courses yet mm -hmm. uh, but the plat the platform is called teachable which is a very popular online course platform Mm -hmm. and i have it branded as digital nomad academy and then all the other courses are right underneath that so i feel oh, like okay. each one of them builds they build on each other mm -hmm. oh okay okay yeah 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 and, you know I've, I've played around with some facebook ads think i think i spent like 80 bucks didn't get any sales 
So I yeah. just cut my losses. And yeah. now I've mostly just been using marketing on LinkedIn and messaging yeah. people individually. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, hundred percent. Yeah. The, the, the organic, uh, organic marketing right now is actually huge for LinkedIn and TikTok. Like TikTok's crazy for that. Like you, you, you have people that like just document their business and they get like, you know, 80 to a hundred thousand followers on TikTok and then they start wow. like pushing courses or whatever. Right. It's, it's, yeah. Still it's still like, TikTok. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I would highly recommend, um, you know, taking, ta- taking some time and like some free time and just like looking at, um, there's actually a really good YouTuber. I'll, 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 uh, I'll actually send you his, uh, information. He, he does like, he just specializes on TikTok stuff and he's like really, really good at it. Uh, and wow. he goes into, he goes into like depth, like he's read all the, like he re- he reads a lot of reports and he's also building a report for it. Uh, but uh-huh. he has like, it's, he, he has a lot of really good knowledge for how to grow your brand on TikTok. Right. Cause I mean, like, TikTok has like really, really good virality with it, like yeah. more than any other platform, but it's sort of interesting because it's like, um, so I think some people jump on, well, I, I know for me, when I first jumped onto it, I was like, oh, you know, you hear people about becoming TikTok stars overnight and then you start posting videos and then you're just like, uh, you know, it gets like a few hundred views, which is still really good, right? For an organic, yeah, yeah. like an organic uh-huh. platform, right? Uh, but then you start scratching your head and you're like, okay, well, wh- where's these million views that <laughs> everybody's talking about? And you sort of realize that it's still, um, you know, th- there's a lot of virality there, but it's, you need uh-huh. to, you, you, you sort of like TikTok in itself is a skill that you need to develop and it takes time to get good at it. Right. Sure, absolutely. Um, Same with like, Instagram. I, yeah. I've started posting some, I like, I prefer Instagram because it's more focused on travel content. Mm-hmm. So I've started uploading video reels. Mm-hmm. like just aerial videos that I've shot on some of the islands. Mm-hmm. And for a while, you know, the first few got a few hundred views. And then recently I went back and I checked and it was like 15,000 on a couple of videos. Oh, wow. So I don't know what ha- changed there. If the video content is better or what, what happened. Yeah. But so I think I, consistency I, is the yes. key, right? Just keep posting every day. Yeah, every no, no, uh, like a hundred percent on that. Uh, I, I think, uh, t- TikTok, well, not TikTok, Instagram is starting to get more viral. Well, the come like Facebook or meta, like they did a name change. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're starting to push, um, uh, like trying to make their platforms way more viral con like viral, uh, like have a viral ability. Right. Sure. Uh, be- because I, I was, yeah, like, like hundred percent, I was actually watching that YouTuber and he was talking about it, comparing TikTok and he was actually telling, he was reading a report that uh facebook put out and facebook was actually talking about tiktok as like one of their like hardest competitors that they've ever gone up against mm. uh and and like the you know has when facebook's been around right uh which i 100 percent agree like now it's sort of like platforms like that it's like if, if if you're able to create a platform that has really good virality it's like you know you, you can sort of take take over and you know like the average like, watch time on tiktok is higher than any other social media platforms like 69 minutes or something it's yeah super- yeah i don't really understand it to be honest i i kind of lose interest after a couple minutes scrolling yeah. through TikTok. but on yeah, instagram i'm like more interested yeah 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 it, 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 yeah like 100 percent. like i i think that's the same for like different generations right like mm-hmm. uh, the younger generation is like super into tiktok whereas like you have for so sure. the millennial that is more instagram and facebook and then you have like the older generation that is more like way more facebook right and it's sort mm-hmm. of like as it goes up, whereas like I, I like I, I know for myself, like TikTok can be like really, really addicting. It's like you can just like start like you can just sit down and you're like, oh, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for something or you're waiting for something. Then ne- like, let's say you're waiting to make some food or something. Then next thing you know, you're like, oh, Jesus, I've scrolled for like 30 minutes. Just yeah. Like scrolling. Just yeah, going through it. Can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Sure. It's <laughs> easy to lose track of time. Yeah. Uh, but to sort of get, move on again to uh, a, a new topic. Um, so what other skills would like, like from your experience in Thailand and dealing with different businesses, what sort of skills are in demand in Thailand right now that people could learn, um, you know, that you've sort of seen that are like, you know, good. I would say coding, but obviously programming is in demand anywhere that you go. And if you have, like, if you have a computer science degree or you have a background in, in uh, programming then you can pretty much work from it you should be able to work from anywhere mm-hmm. all yeah. you need is an internet and a laptop that's it yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent. Uh, so yeah coding um i would say anybody that's interested in starting something in hospitality in the hospitality industry travel or tourism and they have a really really good solid idea put together 
with a business plan and everything, then they they should definitely come because oh, okay. there's so much opportunity there right now. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. And, and is, is there any and like photography, um, of course, too, because it's a beautiful place. I mean, yeah. why? <laughs> you could definitely pick up a camera before you come here. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Um, so yeah, so okay, so uh, awesome, awesome. And um, so uh, also, I, I sort of want to ask now is like, so let, let's say something that might be holding people back is like they might be nervous to move to a new country, go to a new city, and like find friends and stuff. And, and I have already mentioned like you meet like a lot of amazing people. Um, but I, I, like building like strong relationships in Thailand, how how has your sort of experience been with that? Yeah, so it's amazing who you can meet if you just put yourself out there. If, if you um, even like if you're looking to date in Thailand, you can just use Tinder um, and use a dating app or something. But usually it's very easy to meet people if you strike up a conversation. Oh, okay, so awesome. Everywhere you go, people are, are wanting, especially now, you like it's kind of it gets a little bit lonely in certain places. Mm -hmm. So everybody's looking for people to talk to and co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would also recommend going to co-working spaces, putting yourself around like-minded people. And um, of course, a lot of times they'll be hard at work on their laptops. So it's kind of hard to start a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Co-working yeah. spaces, coffee shops, uh, bars, of course, it's a great place to meet people. Oh, okay, and awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. It's easy if you uh, just put yourself out there. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, so now sort of going to uh from your experience, like what, what's been like the your best experience and what's been your worst experience in Thailand? Let's see. That's a tough one. There's been so many good experiences. Not that many bad ones. All right. That's um, I I would say probably the just starting with a bad one first. I was working with a business coach here, actually in Koh Samui, where I am now, about a year ago. And <clears throat> we started working together. I didn't really properly vet him or anything ahead of time. Didn't know much about him. And I, he, he actually was the one who get, got me started creating the courses. Uh, so from that, from that standpoint, it was good. But I worked with him for about a, a month. And it did not work out. I, I was getting very little value out of his, the business thing as a business coach. Mm -hmm. And I think I paid him like half up front. I was going to pay the rest later. But I left Kosamui to start my new job. And I didn't pay him the rest. I think it was like a payment plan or something. And then he actually hired a, um, a private detective to come and find me in Phuket. I, it's crazy to wow. track me down for the money. <laughs> and, and then I, that's part of the reason that I lost my job. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. That, 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 so, that, yeah. Just unbelievable. That was probably yeah. the worst experience that I had here so far. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Like, yeah, that, that, that sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> Very irritating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so do you yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so to now sort of transition to uh, what, what was sort of your best experience? The best one? Yeah. Yeah. So the best one was, I would say, um, meeting my girlfriend. And oh, we yeah. met in, in Chiang Mai about a year ago. It's almost our anniversary. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's just been a constant source of support for me. So that, that was probably the best. We've been together for about a year. So. Oh, okay, well. awesome. Con congratulations, man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, so we're, we're sort of coming to the end here. I got a couple more questions for you. Um, but yeah, so uh, I like to ask these uh, two other questions at the end, sort of at the podcast here. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what would you say is overrated? And what would you say is underrated about living in Thailand? Oh, whew. another tough one. What would be overrated? Hmm. That's a good question. I really don't have an answer. <laughs> overrated. Well, I be underrated or overrated. I'm not sure. I'd say that the the political system here is a mess. Oh, okay. Well, that's I would I think that's pretty much true anywhere you go. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't really think that uh, Thailand is unique in that standpoint. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Okay, the okay. Food, the food is definitely not underrated. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite parts about Thailand. Uh, the awesome. scenery is not underrated. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, like, <laughs> to uh, be honest. Yeah, 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 no, no, it's, 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 uh, it's, yeah, to, to yeah. put you on the spot there, it's, it's a very interesting question, yeah, so, uh, to sort of move on from that, um, uh, yeah, I, I've got, I've got another one that I'm going to put you on a spot for. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> w- w- what is one question you wish people would ask you more, uh, about Thailand? Hmm. Hmm. Um, not sure. <laughs> How is it easy? Like, what what made you decide to come to Thailand of all places on the other side of the world from your home? Yeah, yeah. True. Or was was it difficult to basically leave everything behind and at your home, get out of your comfort zone and go someplace completely new, start a new yeah. life? Yeah, yeah. So how, 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 how is, that, how, is it with challenge? Yeah. So how, how did you sort of find that, like uh, talking about the mental aspect of sort of leaving everything behind uh, and starting that new life? How, how did you sort of find that? The courage? Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or just like that process of figuring that out. Yeah, it's, it's been very challenging at times. I'm not going to lie. Uh, just, but I, I feel like I was, I was in the right place at the right time, right before the pandemic came along. And there's just been so, it's, it's been amazing this whole time oh, okay. you know, with all the ups and downs and uh, everything. It's, it's still, I, I don't really have many regrets. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Island now it's almost like a private Island. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of tourists cluttering the beach. You go for a walk on the beach. Like I went for a run on the beach today. It's just almost completely empty. Oh wow! So yeah. <laughs> with with the downside is there's always an upside, and I would say it's been a very big upside in many regards. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah that that's that, that's 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 really. But it great. just depends on what you're looking for, right? If you're a party goer and you want to be going to the bar all the time and uh, meeting new people constantly, then then maybe the, Thailand is not the right place for you. Yeah, yeah, and, but if if if, if, if you, yeah, but if 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 you're looking to uh, uh, to sort of experience an amazing culture, then I, I, would, I would say Thailand is 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 one what, what, one of the best places to go. Yes. Um, but yeah, so so we're sort of coming to the end here. Um, but yeah, it's it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, Mike. Uh, and it's been amazing Good hearing much. about your hearing about your story and your businesses and all that type of stuff. Um, so where can people find out more about you? Yeah, so you can find me anywhere online. I, I Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Just search for Mike Hope. And I also have a website called thailandshots.com. That's where I, it's a portfolio for my photography. So you can go there. I also sell prints on that website. And for my startup, it's thailand360tours.com. And I also have a, another photography portfolio, hopephotography.com. And okay, awesome. For B Remote Consulting, just look me up on LinkedIn. Or All right, Facebook. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you again, man, for, for, for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, th- thank you to the listeners for making it all the way to the end. You know, if you guys like the podcast uh, and you like the content that was in this podcast, I highly recommend that you go check out Mike on LinkedIn. I'll have it, you know, tagged, I'll have him tagged below in the, the podcast notes. Uh, but yeah, if you can, you know, subscribe, like, leave a review that helps out a ton with the podcast. Anyway, it's been great having you on the show, Mike. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it.